the problem. Welcome now someone who has become an authority on cryptocurrencies on the Hill, Republican Warren Davidson, Ohio. Welcome, Congressman. And I know that you're one of the sponsors of the bill now to try to fix what happened before. First of all, just explain. This is a question of defining who a broker in cryptocurrency is, which has reporting and tax consequences. Yeah, so the IRS code uh, refers to broker maybe differently than most people would think of broker. And uh, this was inserted into the infrastructure bill, really not to provide regula regulation for the industry, but uh, really as a way to raise taxes without passing a tax hike or you know anything like that. It just said, hey, if we had more reporting, we think more people would pay taxes on some unrealized or some gains on crypto. Uh, and and the, it's really not even technically feasible to comply with the language that's in the bill. So there are some decent speeches in the Senate, but the text itself really leaves a lot to be desired. So that's the purpose of the bill, to provide clarity for it. So talking about clarity, Congressman, just to take a step back, because I know you've had a bill that's been proposed, I think it's the token taxonomy bill, to basically specify what's a security, what isn't, is my understanding of it. Where does that stand? Because it does seem like before you get to regulating, it'd be nice to have some clarity. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, the, the tax bill really gets it backwards. You know, you should provide clarity for the market and then try to tax it. You're going to try to maybe tax it out of existence with some of these wrongheaded policies. So, you know, really since 2018, we've had a bill that would, would really um, create a, a bright line test to say, if you're on this side of the test, then you know for sure you're a security. And if you're on the other side of the test, uh, you know, that you're not a security. So right now, um, you know, Chairman Gensler has continued what Chairman Clayton said is, if you think you're going to do anything in the crypto space, come talk to the Securities and Exchange Commission and cut your own deal, basically work out and negotiate with the SEC. That's taken years and provided very little clarity. It's been crippling for the U.S. market. Thanks. I'm just curious. I've read the fact that when you came to Congress, you didn't find many people up there on the Hill that really knew much about cryptocurrency at all. You've now become really an authority among lawmakers up there. Uh, how many lawmakers actually own cryptocurrency? I mean, by the way, do you own cryptocurrency? I don't currently own cryptocurrency personally, uh, but I think I think there are people that are, um, you know, more interested in it today. I'm not, I don't track how many people own it. But there are certainly people that are more aware of it in Congress, and you know this bill really raised the uh, raised the temperature on Congress in a hurry because the 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 sector uh, broadly fintech and certainly crypto uh, weighed in and said, hey, you can't do this to our industry. We couldn't even possibly comply with some of these rules. And there's a provision in there that I think is unconstitutional called 6050I, which says if you transact, uh, you know with someone else, it, it really thinks back to uh, in-person transactions. So if I sold you something for cash more than $10,000, I would have a reporting requirement. Let's say I sold you a used car for $25,000 uh, and you decided to pay cash. If I don't collect all this information when I collect the cash and report to the IRS, it's technically a felony. Um, and so they're trying to apply that to a virtual transaction. So if you say move one Bitcoin, you're well in an excess of the value. Um, you know, that would be would be exchanged. So there are a lot of things in that space that uh, caused the industry to push back. And it really raised the uh, number of people that were coming to me saying, hey, could you explain this to me? And so when peers are coming asking questions, hopefully it's a good sign we're going to have a great hearing on December 8th uh, with a lot of the top names in the sector, Brian Armstrong, Sam Bankman Fried and some others. So, Congressman, let's expand this out a bit to another very hot issue, and that's inflation right across the country. I'm curious about what you're hearing from your constituents, and maybe as important, what do you think should be done about it? Well, look, when I was in manufacturing, uh, before you knew or even cared whose fault it was or how we started making bad parts or, you know, what you got to do to make good parts, you would at least agree, let's stop making bad parts. And, you know, inflation isn't something that just spreads like a virus or a, some natural disaster like an earthquake. It's a result of policy choices. So uh, while we do know now that we're supposed to have continuity at the Federal Reserve with Chairman Powell, uh, hopefully we don't have continuity in the policy. Uh, they've signaled that they plan to taper. Uh, it is always touchy to uh, taper things down, sort of like applying brakes on ice. You, got, you, you jab them too hard, it creates a, a, a wreck. Uh, but you do have to get them applied. And I think that's the thing. And unfortunately, uh, Congress isn't helping. I mean, the only only plan on Capitol Hill is how many cans of fuel to dump on the fire, uh, whether that's uh, in the form of Build Back Better, whether it's the 
1.75 trillion version or the five and a half trillion version, it's it's not going to be easy for the Federal Reserve to accommodate what the uh, fiscal policy is being delivered from Congress. Well, well, I'd love to talk to you about that, Build Back Better. But before that, let's talk about Jay Powell and his nomination to re-up as, as chair. Uh, do you agree with that? I understand you're on the House side. You don't get a vote because the Senate confirms. But do you agree with that decision? Do you think he now is focused on inflation the way you would like him to be? Uh, look, I had a great conversation with him in August. Uh, he and I had a one-on-one -on -one that was supposed to be brief, uh, you know, under half an hour. I think we spent an hour and a half talking with one another. I think he understands the scope of the problem. Uh, I think he was the best option that Joe Biden was considering. Uh, and, you know, I, I was a little disappointed over the course of 2020 as he and others continued to call for more fiscal stimulus. Uh, and look, you dump six trillion into the economy. Yeah. We know that GDP didn't go up by six trillion. So where did the other four or five trillion dollars go? It went to inflate assets, you know, asset price inflation. And people in the market love it, but um, it, it really has grown the wealth gap and it hasn't really flowed through to every nook and cranny it needs, which has created some of the demand for Build Back Better. Yeah. And, and so I don't know that Powell's really uh, changed a lot, but he has stopped calling for more fuel to be delivered. Uh, Congressman, on the Build Back Better briefly, uh, what's happened has happened. Going forward, Build Back Better has not happened yet. Do you agree with the economists who say that if, in fact, it's paid for, it will not add to inflation? Well, look, if it's paid for, it'll at least be better than what we've done, but it isn't paid for. Um, even the Congressional Budget Office says uh, Build Back Better adds $400 billion to the debt. Uh, and the infrastructure bill also adds 400 billion. So you're adding almost another trillion dollars just in the you know generally <clears throat> errant uh, CBO models. And and of course the way that they do these models is straight line math with not real um, credit for discounted cash flow. So they've got sh a few years of spending but 10 years of tax collections. They know that's not an honest way to account for this. Uh, the plan is that there's going to be 10 years of spending, and of course. Further than that, they arbitrarily cut off at a 10-year window. So it, it, it really is structurally bad. And even things that you say would help people get back to the workforce, like childcare, yeah. there's not an expectation that people go back to work. You don't have to go to work, go to yeah. school, or volunteer anywhere to get free childcare. Yeah. It's a wrongheaded bill, uh, not just financially, but it, it, it undermines the dignity right. of work. And right now, that's what our economy needs. As, as you've seen COVID, a lot of people yeah. have substituted consumption of goods for the right. consumptions of services. So the service economy is still below where it was before, but they've shifted some of that spending to right. goods and we're not making them. Yeah. Congressman, it's always great to have you with us and we wish you a happy Thanksgiving. That is Congressman Warren Davidson, Republican.